She was so darn squeaky. Taylor Swift has led me to this point. You can blame her for posting a spooky theme video in the first week of August. Because my gosh, folklore has me in the most fall anticipating mood ever, even though like, I mean, I'm not loving this summer if I'm being honest, but I love summer. And just like, I love, you know, that Stevie Nicks mysterious, like witchy vibe. And I feel like although folklore is not entirely like that, it kind of has like that same feel that like mysterious aura or whatever. And so I thought I'd scare, blah, blah, not scare, no pun intended. I thought I'd share with you guys in my kitchen because it's a million degrees here and this is like the only room where there's not a really loud fan. I thought I'd share with you guys some of my paranormal experiences. So cue the X-Files music. My paranormal experience is weird in the fact that I don't exactly understand still to this day what it exactly is or if I even want to understand. I feel like I should have like my cross necklace on or like some sage burning for this video because I ain't trying to bring no demons into this house. In this house, we are Jesus loving good people. Don't want none of that. Just have to put that out there first. Not today, Satan. Anyways. So first of all, most of these instances occurred at my parents' house back in Illinois. Besides what I'll share with you guys at the end, which is more something that I struggle with, um, not on a daily basis, but every once in a while still to this day, that's kind of unrelated. The most recent one was a couple years ago, I had a job in Chicago and I decided to stay the weekend at my parents' house after I was done with work on a Friday. And I was super excited because I hadn't been home besides like a holiday in a long while. So usually when I go back home, I really only have time to just like do family stuff, you know, typical holiday type of thing. But this time I can actually like go out and have like a night on the town in Peoria, Illinois. Very exciting. <laughs> I'm going out with my friend Alicia and we're, you know, partying hard into the late hours of the night. Not really, we were just mainly catching up, having heart to hearts, like creeping on people's Instagrams and, you know, all that fun stuff you do when you go out and you just stick with your one friend and don't really socialize with anybody else. Just kidding, but we're both kind of on the shy side when it comes to like going out and partying or whatever. So back at the house all the while was my mom, my grandma, and my sister. And my grandma is very like frail. I mean, she's a hardworking woman, but she, you know, takes her time getting up the stairs. She's not to be up past like 7 p.m. And she's very scheduled. She really just does the same thing every day. That'll be relevant in a little bit. So finally, like around, one, the bars closed down because that's the time they close when you're in a small town. And um, I decided to get an Uber back to my parents' house. So my family, they have two German shepherds who bark at like a squirrel. They just, they're just barkers. That's just how they are. Love them for it though. Not always, not at seven in the morning, but you know what I'm saying. So whenever I go out, my mom knows that I'm gonna be coming back late after she and my sister and my grandma are like asleep. So she'll just leave the front door unlocked because she knows if I open up the garage door, like A, it's gonna be super rickety and loud and wake people up. And B, like that's gonna cause the dogs to bark more because they're used to people going in and out the front door, but not really the garage door as much, if that makes sense. So I get home and the door is locked, which is weird because my mom always leaves it unlocked whenever I'm going out because she knows that I'll be coming in late and I'll just lock it behind me and I don't have a key because I don't live there anymore. But this time the door is locked and so I'm just like knocking on it and then like pounding on it and ringing the doorbell and eventually my mom comes to the door and she looks super confused and she's like, what are you doing outside? I just let you in an hour ago. I'm like, okay, um, probably just had a weird dream or whatever. But the details were a little bit weird because she said that she knew it was me who came in because the dogs didn't bark when I opened the front door because they knew it was me. And then that she even heard me petting my sister's dog, Atticus, and saying, oh, good boy, Addie. The weirdest part of all was this oddly specific detail that she heard me go to the Keurig to start to make tea or coffee or something. And this is weird in the sense that that's not normally something that I would do at night, especially like late at night after going out. But this particular night I had had beer, which usually I don't drink. 
and it was kind of upsetting my stomach and I know that like ginger or peppermint tea always kind of helps if I have that weird upset stomach feeling and so I was thinking about it in the uber like oh my gosh like I need to have like a tea or something when I get home because my stomach is not feeling good and I don't want to puke and so when she said that it was a little bit like mm, like that's just something doesn't sit right with me then after I got my coffee my mom said she heard me lock the front door and walk up the stairs to my room so she did not get up to lock that door she had unlocked it before didn't get up to lock it these are all things like normally i just be like okay my mom was just dreaming she was just like maybe she had a little bit of like a psychic moment thinking or like a mother's intuition knowing what i wanted whatever but then what really kind of creeped me out about this whole experience was the fact that i go upstairs and i use my sister's bathroom whenever i'm home i go into her room and go into the bathroom to brush my teeth and she gets like startled and she's like, what are you doing? Like, you're brushing your teeth again? She's like, I literally already heard you do this. Like, why do you keep coming in here and bothering me? And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I literally heard you like an hour or so ago. You came in here, you brushed your teeth, you're making all this noise, and like, you have to f come do this again? Like, I got work in the morning. I'm like, did you see me? She's like, no, but like, you were making so much noise. At that point, I asked if she heard me do anything else. It's a weird question to ask someone, but she literally said, almost identically what my mom had said specifically the thing about the coffee she had heard the cure because our cure is kind of like rickety and it makes a lot of noise and she had heard it and um she said that when i came in she was mad because atticus is her dog like he sleeps with her and he got up to like greet me at the door so the next day like i'm like you guys are just messing with me like this this can't be like a thing like it was just a like, weird coincidence that you guys just both heard these noises you know it's an old house and we look into it and there's this thing called, hang on, I gotta Google it because I'm gonna forget. I don't even know how to type this into Google, but it's like a Norway, um, what is it? It's like, family swore they already heard me come home. Mmm, doppelganger, no. This is driving me nuts, guys. I'm really trying to Google it. I cannot remember for the life of me how we got it the last time. It was like a Swedish folklore. <gasps> I think that's it. Okay, I found it, you guys. It's called, I'm gonna butcher this. I'm sorry to my friend Emmy if you're watching this because she's Swedish. Avar. Avar Doger. I don't. Avar Doger. And what Avar Doger is in Scandinavian folklore, I say this like I'm the professor, whatever. Um, it is like deja vu in reverse, basically. It's a spirit that mimics a person. They'll mimic a person from everything from their footsteps, their scent, their sounds, their appearance and overall demeanor. Sorry, I'm literally just reading from Wikipedia. Oh, I should really donate to them when they're begging for like that $1, but it's trying times for all of us, right? Anyway, it's a spirit that will have um, a person's footsteps, voice, scent, appearance, overall demeanor, and precedes them in a location or activity resulting in witnesses believe that they've heard or seen the actual person before the person physically arrives. This bears a subtle difference from a doppelganger with a less sinister connotation. It's also kind of like being a phantom dumble, which is a form of bilocation, which I guess is a psychic or miraculous ability where an individual or object is located in two different places at the same time. I remember reading this on Wikipedia for uh, the first time with my sister and like both of us just had chills. And I've tried, like, I'm such the scully, I'm such the skeptic, I'm such, like, a believer in science, but at the same time, like, I know that we don't know everything, and when it got to that part about, like, a psychic ability, I'm not trying to say, like, I'm that so raven, but it was more when I was a child and I suffered from epilepsy, and I've kind of, you know, that grown out of that a little bit. But what's scary kind of about this form of epilepsy that I have is I can have a seizure and not even know it. Because I have absence epilepsy, when I have a seizure, it's just kind of like... So if I'm alone, or say in the back of an Uber and the driver's not paying attention and I already have my headphones in, if I have a seizure, I wouldn't even know a lot of the times if I have one. It's kind of like the same feeling of like zoning out and just like coming back to. 
which especially like if you have been drinking it's easy to kind of feel like that so part of me wonders like in this weird scenario that this thing's actually possible like was that something but now i'm realizing how insane that sounds when i'm saying it out loud so we're just gonna send that one to ryan and shane to deal with on buzzfeed unsolved because i ugh, not sponsored by the way yeah this video is sponsored by 7-eleven big gulp you guys um yeah or the other option was it was a demon who takes the likeness of a person to enter a house so yeah both great options, right? So the second experience in my house actually happened the next week. And this was after I had already um, gone back to New York. There was two nights in a row where some weird stuff happened. The first one, my grandma woke up in the middle of the night and she said there was a nurse in like a 1940s uniform with a gold cross pin with purple lining was at her bed, tucking her in. And at first I'm like, okay, you know, it's my grandma, like, she says some weird stuff sometimes, but that was, like, definitely out of character for her to say something like that, and oddly specific, and, um, just because, like, everything had happened, like, the previous week when my mom told me about this, like, what have happened with my grandma, I was, like, a little, like, mm, I'm gonna be, you know, holding a cross over myself next time I come home and visit, and then the next night, uh, this was around, like, seven or eight, my sister and my mom are in the basement and they're watching a movie. And the way my basement's set up is there's like an L-shaped couch type thing. There's two couches that touch. And like the dogs, my sister's dog and my mom's dog were on one part of the couch and my mom's sister were like on the side of it watching the TV in like the corner. And then if you look this way, there's stairs with the doors always usually open where you can see like the hallway of the first floor because they're in the basement. They're watching a movie and they see a woman in like a white uniform run by. And then they hear like it, her go up the stairs. And I'm like, you guys, like this is so, come on. It was just grandma. I'm still trying to justify it. I mean, I still kind of am now because it's kind of creepy when you think about this stuff and um, don't think about it logically. Because then you realize like some stuff could be going on right in front of your nose. So I'm like, no, 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 like you guys had to be imagining it. And she's like, well, I mean, honestly, like we both saw it. The dogs like looked up, they noticed something. At the end of the day, like it wasn't grandma, different color hair. And when have you ever seen grandma run? I try not to think about this stuff whenever I'm visiting home. So those, were like the weird events that happened in the span of literally like a week at my house. And then it's been quiet ever since. And my whole life growing up, you know, occasionally we'd have moments where like the cat sees something, but you can't. Or like the dog's growling at nothing. But I feel like all pets kind of have that spazziness or they just see like a squirrel outside the window or something. But I never felt like my house had a weird vibe to it. Like nothing like this ever happened when I was a kid. It was just that one time, that one week. It's been one week, one month, one month. Anyways, and after that, there really hasn't been anything, thankfully, um, that has happened in my family's house. So it's just like weird that it would just be like this one-off thing and then never happen again. I'm, I don't know if people are experts on paranormal, if y'all wanna explain theories, I got nothing. And the only thing weird about my house is one of the bedrooms used to belong to an embalmer. Not that like embalmers are automatically creepy people like from the Adams family or whatever. Like I'm sure like they do Taco Tuesday and like, you know, hit up chilies for margaritas or whatever, totally like normal people. It's just a little weird. You know, it's not a career that you see every day. I'm not gonna lie, if I was on a date and someone mentioned that they're an embalmer, I would be a little bit weirded out. Is that prejudice of me? Maybe, that's on me, I'll live with that. I don't know. Do with this information as you want. I'm not realizing this is something that I've never even told my therapist. So there you go, YouTube. Don't say I don't give you anything. But yeah, this is something I usually don't talk about because I don't want people to think I'm like that, you know, super like Stevie Nicks girl, like believing in weird who knows what, but it happened. So that's my most concrete um, experience or most out there experience with paranormal. But as I mentioned earlier, the one thing that affects me more than that, that I experienced the most is um, 
sleep paralysis. And this is something that's happened since I was like, it started I think like around puberty, like around 13 I want to say. And I didn't know what it was until like college, until like um, Twitter actually, when I like saw other people describing this, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God I'm not alone. Which is why like I don't really understand when people want to lucid dream because having sleep paralysis and the feeling of like basically what sleep paralysis is is like a very heavy vivid dream and you kind of feel like that tingly feeling like when your foot falls asleep but like all over and you'll feel it's different like sometimes I wake up and it's like pressure it feels like someone's like you know using like a giant um like printing press almost to like way down my body to the bed and I'm aware of it and I'll try to get up but I can't move anything and I will try to scream but I can't like my nothing comes out and then I will literally like be able to like look over at like my boyfriend sleeping and like recognize that and then but I can't like do anything I can't like pat him to wake me up or something it's like I don't know how to explain it fully but it's a terrifying feeling like I would not wish sleep paralysis on anybody and thankfully it's not like an everyday thing that happens for me. I'm a little scared to be honest you guys, I'm knocking on wood, I'm going to sleep with my cross necklace on tonight for sure because I don't want this to bring on anything tonight because I haven't had a sleep paralysis dream in like a month. I get them a lot when I'm napping too, I don't know if that's something, but like if I fall asleep on the couch, I'm now low key kind of terrified to fall asleep on the couch because most of the time if I'm doing that and I'm napping, I'll have a sleep paralysis dream. Another form of them is weirdly worse than the other one. It's the feeling of floating above your body and like feeling like you're not going to be able to get back in it. And I don't know if there's a correlation between when I did have an eating disorder and I would be so fearful of like going to bed and dying if like there's something in that. But that one's the worst feeling. Um, and then like looking over and like seeing yourself asleep. I know this sounds like you guys are really like, oh gosh, what is this girl doing? But these might just be dreams. I'm just sharing with you guys because I feel like that's what the internet's for and I love a good spooky video. So here's one for you, I'm putting mine out there in the world. But yeah, and then um, the third form of sleep paralysis dreams that I get is just, is a little bit like the first one where I still have like that feeling of like paralysis, like because it's called sleep paralysis, I get. But that feeling of like I can't move, I can't scream, I just won't have that pressure feeling, but I will feel like a dark, evil energy like in the room, or like a that like a panic feeling, like um just you know when like you're having a panic attack or like you're having. A, a moment of fear where you get that like white hot cold at the same time feeling like up the back of your spine and neck that feel like intensified whoo see so, yeah, I've, I've done like not that much research in sleep paralysis because I feel like I'm such like a, a worrier that it's just gonna make me worry more and I'll have trouble sleeping because I'll be worried that that's gonna happen and I, I don't want that to happen because I, I love me some good sleep so good for you. Unfortunately, my paranormal experience does not involve any attractive vampires or werewolves like my ninth grade self so desperately wanted to be real. Hashtag Team Jacob. Yes, I'm one of those girls. And no, I've never had an alien visit and gotten to get visited by two extremely good looking FBI agents that work for the X-Files. Nor have I had any run-ins with my hero, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But these are my paranormal experiences. So, if you guys made it to the end of this rambling video, you can thank Taylor Swift for inspiring this spooky folklore, folk tale, folk, 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 that's a fun word, mood. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit, a little bit, it's a lot of it outside of my normal realm of topics to talk about, but hey, you know what? We got time in these trying times to talk about a lot of things. Speaking of these trying times, I do have a new music video, aka a video I made on my phone in my bathroom. It's trying times, time takes slowly. Slowly, days just seem to slip away from me. These trying times, time takes slowly. Slowly, I lose my sanity. Want to check it out and share it and all that stuff and i now 
have a Twitch. Gamer girl. Just kidding, I'm not a gamer girl because I really suck at video games, but I do love playing The Sims and it's something relaxing and I thought it might be fun to start streaming because I enjoy watching other people's streams. You should check out Plumbella, she's hilarious, and stuff with Sims. So yeah, you can follow me on Twitch now at Alexandria to the Max and watch me play The Sims and live my best life on a video game and build not so great, but still have a fun time doing it. I'm gonna go sprinkle some garlic, holy water, and sage all over this apartment and pray to Lord to keep out the evil forces. Well, just in general, because it's, you know what? We need some good times around here. We need some good things to be happening up in here. And by that, I mean for the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you on the flip. Somebody said jumpsuit montage. Who needs blackmail when you can embarrass yourself on the internet for free? And while jumpsuits are amazing for dancing and a night out and it looks super fly in them, there's one area where they kind of have a drawback and that's going to the bathroom. Might want to bring a friend with you. I'm honestly at this point considering knocking on my neighbor's door and asking her to unbutton this little button in the back of this one so I can pop out of it. I just got flashbacks of the time I was in H&M and I had to ask like the fitting room attendant to help me out of a sweater. Retail workers are not paid enough.